The first time I used a pendulum, I honestly didn't expect it to work. I was sitting there with my niece, who found it on my desk, and recently arrived from an Etsy store. I wanted to try using it by all means. I was very curious and did believe that it could work, but not straight away, certainly not so easily, and not with my energetic niece sitting with me. But it worked immediately. I simply asked, show me yes, and it started to swing. I then asked, show me no, and it turned around and swung the other direction, and it is right now as I'm saying this, it swung so, so much. My niece just outright accepted it immediately in the way that kids do, or maybe she thought I was doing it deliberately. She quickly moved on, but I sat there after she left amazed. Whatever it is that causes the pendulum to swing, whether it's just the subconscious mind or it's something greater such as angels or spirits or guides influencing its movements, it astonishes me every single time with the sheer force and power of its swings. Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel or if you're just meeting me for the first time, hi my name is Ebony and this channel is all about productivity, wellness and spirituality. I am so excited that you're here today with me to talk about pendulums. I hope that you'll find it helpful and consider subscribing if you haven't already. So what's the deal with pendulums? Today I hope to dispel some of the misconceptions, explain a couple of theories on how they might work, and show you how I use them with a quick demonstration. I hope that it answers all your questions, but if you'd like to learn more, please do drop a question or comment down below, or find me at Instagram, at Ebony Highland. I'll also have a link down below to today's blog post which will have way more information and a list of resources and recommendations if you want to delve a little deeper. So first of all, what is a pendulum, what are they made of, and can you make your own? Put simply, a pendulum is a weighted object, usually a pendant of some kind, at the end of a string or chain that is suspended in the air and can swing in any direction. The pendant is commonly made from crystal, but it can also be metal, wood or glass. My pendulum is made of selenite crystal on a metal chain. You could definitely try making your own pendulum or you can even use a necklace or a ring on the end of a string or chain. My amethyst necklace here actually works as a pendulum too. So if you really want to try using a pendulum maybe see if you can use a necklace or ring first. When it comes to purchasing a pendulum, the ideal would be to go to a crystal shop and choose one in person. Take your time to select the pendulum that feels right to you, even if that means waiting for the right one to catch your eye. But if you don't have access to a local shop that sells them, or you're stuck in lockdown because of COVID, then it's still very possible to find a pendulum online. I recommend trying Etsy or looking for a local online store that sources their crystals and products ethically. I'll link below to the Australian store where I purchased my pendulum, the Mandela Flow, if you're interested. Wherever you find your pendulum or if you're just using a necklace that you have already, whatever it is you're using, be sure to cleanse it first. I'll talk more about this very soon. How does a pendulum work? Some believe that the pendulum swings because your subconscious mind sends nerves to your hand, causing it to move ever so slightly. If that is the case, the micro movement must be so slight because I can't feel or notice it at all. The logical side of me believes that this reason makes the most sense though, especially when you consider that deep down you likely know the answers to your questions that you may ask. Another common way I've heard it described is that the pendulum brings together the rational and intuitive sides of you using both the left and right sides of your brain. It allows you to gain knowledge and insight on your questions in a similar way journaling or meditating can. In a way, I find that using a pendulum can be actually very similar to journaling. I talk to my pendulum as if I'm writing down what's on my mind while pausing to reflect and think deeply as I write. Using the pendulum is like asking for guidance and clarity, similar to any form of divination from room casting to card reading. Though many do believe that 
using any form of divination, including using a pendulum, connects you with so much more than just your subconscious. Many believe that using a pendulum connects you to spirits, guides, angels, or higher beings. Some even go further to describe the different names of deities that they're connecting with through the pendulum and how the energy shifts from one to the other. If you write out letters, for instance, you can even find out names of the spirits or energies that you're connecting with, for instance. Again, it's very hard to know whether your pendulum is connected with a spirit or whether it's simply reflecting what you believe in your subconscious. I suppose there's not really any way of knowing without any kind of evidence or way to prove that it might be the case. All I know for sure is that I am not deliberately moving my hand or arm in the slightest. So it's pretty amazing to see it move so powerfully. Whatever you believe it is that causes the pendulum to swing, when you try it for yourself, you know that you're definitely not moving it deliberately at least. My pendulum turns so quick without my arm or hand moving it at all, at least noticeably, and it still surprises me sometimes. Now for the really fun part of the video, let me show you how to actually use a pendulum. How to use a pendulum. First things first, cleanse your pendulum and your surroundings. Even if you believe it's just your subconscious mind that you're talking to, cleansing will still help you get into the right frame of mind. Free yourself of negativity, banish any lingering energies and simultaneously clear your space from distractions and clutter. It's worth doing regardless of your beliefs. Here's what I do, just as a suggestion, but do what feels right to you. To cleanse my room, I use essential oils and or I burn incense. I also often use a singing bowl, running the mallet anti-clockwise to rid the space of negativity and bad vibes. I can talk more in depth about how to cleanse your room or house in another video too, if you like. I'll be honest, I don't know what I believe exactly, but doing these things makes me feel more in control and relaxed, and that is reason enough to do it, in my opinion. I don't cleanse the pendulum all the time, just if I feel like it needs it. To cleanse an object such as a pendulum, you can run it through incense smoke or use the energy of the moon. There are so many cleansing options, it really is a whole other video. My pendulum is made of selenite, which is a wonderful crystal that you can use to cleanse things too, and many believe it cleanses itself. I have a bar of selenite that I place crystals or jewelry onto to charge and cleanse too. So now your space, oh, little bug. <laughs> so now that your pendulum and space has been cleansed, Clear away any clutter, maybe light a candle if you like, and place any crystals nearby that you feel will help you, particularly any that are grounding and protective, such as black tourmaline. Have a notebook handy in case you want to write down anything, and even have a list of questions ready if you like. From my experience, stopping and starting is okay, as I'm often interrupted. The best way to hold the pendulum is with your elbow on a table so you can really keep your arm and hand steady. I use my non-dominant left hand to hold the chain, looping it through my fingers as you can see here. The first thing to do with the pendulum is ask for it to show you its responses. Are my eyes blue? Take note of how the pendulum swings for yes and no. Also consider asking for maybe and unknown responses if you like. To be certain that the responses are accurate, start by asking questions that you are 100% certain of the answers. For example, is my name Ebony? Yes. Are my eyes blue? No. Is my last name Highland? Is this on video? If it helps, you can use a pendulum board and ask the pendulum to follow what is written on the board. Having a pendulum board can be helpful, but it's not necessary. Plus, if you do want to try it out, you could easily just write out any number of answers on a piece of paper. If you want more information than just yes or no, you can even write out letters or particular answers. In one video I watched here on YouTube by The Wholeness Shift, she created her own board featuring a series of common responses she receives from her pendulum that she gathered over time. I'll link the video below among other suggestions that I recommend. Just a quick example of what you can do to make your own. Obviously you can make it a lot fancier and prettier, but just to give you an idea. 
And you can also do something along these lines. say these are sort of options that you commonly are asking should I do this or should I do this so you could actually write them all down on a bit of paper like so so let's do it in pairs do I need to meditate or sleep more which do I need the most right now Meditate. Yeah, that's definitely meditate. Thank you. I did get a good sleep last night, so that makes sense. Okay, should I have coffee or tea? Coffee. Always coffee. Let's be real, it's always coffee, isn't it? If I pull you back over here and say, coffee? Should I have coffee? Yes. Should I meditate? Yes. So this gives me more options for what you can ask basically. Should I exercise, like go for a walk, or should I clean? Clean. Unfortunately, it's saying clean. That's probably right though because I've now made a mess because I had to clear space to do this video. <laughs> so obviously all of these are good options, right? Are all these good options? Yes. So yeah, you can definitely ask more than just yes and no questions and you can definitely use it in more ways than simply asking questions to begin with too, like picking a card or finding a lost object. There are a lot more options than simply what you see displayed here in this sort of more simple board or even on the fancy version of that. Uh, like I said, the boards are not totally necessary either and you can easily just scribble some things down on a piece of paper and still get a lot more insight than simply holding it and saying yes or no. On that note, it's important to ask the right questions too. Think about it a little before you pick up the pendulum. What is it you'd like guidance about? Here are a few suggestions of things you can ask and do with your pendulum. You can ask about the future. Though, as I've said in videos before, the purpose of divination is to connect with your intuition and to understand yourself better. If it is predicting any future events, I believe you still have the control. It's up to you to make things happen however much you may be guided in the process. Another use of pendulums is to find lost objects. It's like a game of hot or cold. You ask a series of questions in the form of is the object in this direction, is the object on this desk, etc. while moving throughout your space. Okay, we're going to look for my ring that I usually wear on this finger. My little gold ring with the filigree pattern. Can you help me find my ring? Awesome. Is my ring in this room? Yes. Is my ring on this desk? Yes. Is my ring amongst the crystals? Is it over here? Am I close? <gasps> yes. <laughs> Is this the ring I was looking for? <laughs> yes. Thank you. <laughs> my hand. 
you can reinforce what you already know deep down. Will this job benefit me in a positive way? Will spending money on this product truly benefit me? Even do I need more sleep or do I need to meditate? You can use it to pick a tarot or oracle card or runestone. Fan out your cards and ask your pendulum to help you pick, drawing whichever card the pendulum responds yes to. decisions. Is it a good idea to message this person? If you do believe that there's more to the pendulum than connecting with the subconscious and that it's actually spirits or guides of some kind communicating with you, then you can take your questions to a whole other level. <laughs> I know there are likely people watching this thinking there's no way a pendulum actually works on its own. And truthfully, the doubters and skeptics may not even get the pendulum to work at all. They may not get any responses from a pendulum and it will only reinforce their idea that it doesn't work. I believe that a pendulum is likely only to work if you believe that it will. Whatever your reason, or if you generally don't understand it like me, but you just trust that it's a helpful tool either way, there is so much to be gained from this practice that it's worth trying it for yourself. I honestly haven't made up my mind. I'm not willing to dismiss any ideas unless they're proven otherwise. In learning and delving into spirituality and divination methods, I think it's so important to keep an open mind. Rather than dismiss things that we don't understand or can't scientifically prove, I am willing to believe that truly anything is possible. You've likely heard the phrase, I'll believe it when I see it, but I think sometimes we need to believe in something in order to see it. Now you might be ready to loudly proclaim, I do believe in fairies, I do, I do, like in Peter Pan, and then be sadly disappointed when Tinkerbell and friends don't magically appear in front of you. But when it comes to the pendulum swinging, if you do believe that it's possible, with whatever reasons you tell yourself for why it might be working, then it will very likely work. You may be astonished by how well it might work. Don't doubt it, don't overanalyze it, but believe that it's possible. And it might just become an effective, beautiful tool that you can use every day to enrich your life. What do you think of pendulums? Have you tried one yourself before or do you want to try one? I'd love to hear your experiences down in the comments below. If you have any questions or feedback, also leave that in the comments below or feel free to follow me on Instagram at Ebony Highland. I'd love to see you over there as well. Also, if you want to know more about pendulums too, definitely check out today's blog post. There is so much more information over there, resources and recommendations. Every video I put up has a blog post that goes along with it. So it's definitely worth heading over to my website, ebonyhighland.com, if you want way more information and also to join the newsletter over there because I've been doing weekly readings and it's been so much fun. So I'd love to connect with you on the email list too. I also share the occasional free PDF there too. So definitely check that out if you're interested in things like runestones and pendulums and everything else. Oh, and if you haven't already, please consider subscribing to this channel. It means the absolute world to me. And be sure to ring the little bell so that you're notified when I post new videos every Thursday at 2 p.m. Oh, and uh, hit like as well so that I know that you enjoyed this video. The feedback really does help. And it helps YouTube know that I'm probably doing something right. So that's kind of nice too. Thank you so much for watching today. I hope you're all keeping well and I can't wait to see you in next week's video. Bye.